Good evening, everybody. So tonight we are so lucky to have Dr. Ahmed, uh, Dr. Adil Hussein uh, to continue his educational material uh, tonight. And uh, it is our honor tonight to welcome for the first time on the MEGA platform, Dr. Ahmed Mustafa. And all of you know, know him very well as Dr. Ahmed Fathi Rabia. He is an assistant and the intensive care consultant in Kuwait, and he is multiple achiever. I couldn't read his CV in uh, just a few minutes. He has a fellowship of the College of the in Ireland in 2021, and he has Kuwaiti Board of Anesthesia 19, uh, 2019, and the European Diploma of Anesthesiology and Intensive Care. And of course, he could go out of Egypt without his master's degree. Uh, tonight, it is my honor and on your behalf to welcome Dr. Ahmed Zathi Rabia to be the moderator of this session with our uh, Dr. Adi Hussein. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Saad, for this nice presentation. And it is honor for me to be for the first time in the MIGA online. And I want to thank Dr. Saad for inviting me. This is uh, firstly. And secondly, thank you for your persistent uh, effort and the persistent work in the education process for all the anesthetists. And I want to welcome this night with Dr. Adil Hussain, the ICU consultant of, um, of critical care and in King Abdullah Medical City. Dr. Adil is an eminent speaker and uh, one of the tutors of Saudi Board of uh, ICU and also fellowship program. Uh, today we will continue the interactive sessions of uh, MCQ for the critical care. Actually, it is very beneficial for all uh, the doctors who are going to board the exams or fellowships or uh, European diploma. The advantage of this session, you will read the MCQ questions, you will think, so you will know how to approach the MCQ questions. The second the one is how to participate in the discussion and how to break the barriers between you and the examiners as well. Welcome, Dr. Adel, and nice to be with you tonight. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ahmed, uh, for your uh, nice uh, uh, intro. Uh, and uh, my thanks and appreciation should be extended for uh, Professor Saad Mahdi and the, uh, uh, the whole panelists tonight. And the mega online platform for uh, giving us uh, other group to the opportunity uh, to be with you in uh, uh, a real interactive uh, session uh, that we uh, started uh, for the third week tonight will be the third uh, session. Uh, Dr. Saad, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward him for his uh, great effort. Uh, every week he is doing uh, awesome uh, effort to uh, record and to edit, then to upload and, and the YouTube uh, for all the sessions, not only the interactive session, all sessions for the Mega Online. Uh, it's a very rich uh, library. I encourage uh, all of my colleagues uh, from the uh, anesthesia, uh, critical care, uh, either board or residency, uh, as Dr. Ahmed uh, mentioned, uh, our colleagues who are preparing them themselves for the uh, board exam, the fellowship exam, the, the master degree, and the, uh, or EDIAC even, to go through uh, this very rich uh, library of uh, the MEGA online uh, platform. Uh, so uh, tonight uh, will be the, the third session of our series uh, of the interactive uh, ICU uh, MCQs. Uh, so I cannot start uh, before saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf taqillah al-mursaleen, Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahabihi wa sallam, tasliman kathira. So before... <coughs> Uh, as I told you, this is the, the third session. We have uh, two sessions before. Uh, one was uh, on the 1st of October, one on the 2nd of October. Second was on, second session was on 16. And uh, the third session uh, will be tonight uh, with you. Uh, as we, we do uh, with the 
previous two sessions. And before we start, uh, just reminding our colleagues uh, attending with us uh, tonight, inshallah. Uh, it's a, a matter of interactive session. So uh, as Dr. Ahmed said, uh, it's not an exam, it's uh, uh, going through the MCQ uh, question in critical care uh, or a question uh, true or false, for example. Uh, so uh, it, it's a matter of discussion to uh, know how can we answer and to build our knowledge based on uh, four elements, the correct answer, the rationale, then we will give you some teaching points and some references. So uh, remember, it's an active, active interactive session. Uh, I would like to share with you. So I, I, I need uh, your, your, your contribution. Uh, so Dr. Ahmed, he will uh, assign uh, one of the volunteers from the, attendee, from the attendees tonight or the participants. He will uh, drop his name to the chat box. So please do not answer uh, in the chat box, uh, E or C or D. Just drop your name, uh, raise your hand, uh, then unmute yourself. Dr. Ahmed, he will choose the, the, the participant or the attendees. Uh, the attendee, and he will uh, have the question. Uh, he will read it, uh, so he can read it loudly, so all the, the participants will uh, hear uh, the question. Then he will have five minutes to read, then to think, then he will answer the question. Uh, then after, I, I, I'm, during this, uh, these five minutes, I will not interrupt him, uh, me or our moderator, Dr. Ahmed. Uh, just I will listen to his answers, uh, whatever E, B, C, or D, or true or false, uh, without interruption. I will give him the five minutes for him or her. Then uh, after he finished, I will uh, uh, go through the, the question, uh, dissecting the question uh, into four. First, what's the correct answer or the best answer? Second, why it's the correct and why others are wrong, which is the rationale uh, of the answer. Then uh, with this topic, uh, we should have some teaching points. I will not go on into details of the topic, but just teaching points then or highlights or key points, important key points. Then when you go back home uh, or when you review the topic, so uh, it, you, you will have the headlines or the, the key parts. Then I will end up uh, for that topic by some references as uh, a matter of uh, building your references for this topic. And uh, we did our best to be the most updated evidence-based uh, references. Then by the end of the session, we will have some homework for you that those topics building uh, your uh, curriculum uh, for the critical care. Uh, so with each session, uh, we have like two or three topics, then by uh, like uh, three, four, five sessions and uh, going through uh, the continuity, if we will have time, inshallah ta'ala, uh, next month or the month after, then we are building up uh, uh, a library of MCQ, plus uh, on parallel a library of the curriculum so you can go and uh, have the references, the teaching points, then you, you will enrich your uh, knowledge uh, in, 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 in your uh, critical care field. So uh, by the end of this session, inshallah ta'ala, I will uh, present you the homework for the previous uh, two sessions. So total three sessions uh, with the questions and the homework. Uh, so uh, let's to start with the first question uh, tonight. Uh, this is, will be the six questions. Uh, we presented in the first session uh, two questions. The second session were three questions. And tonight, this is question number six. <laughs> So, Dr. Ahmed, uh, would you please uh, to choose uh, from the chat okay. according to you? Uh, I think uh, 
we have a good number of attendees and, and I think we have uh, our colleague from the Equity Board of Anesthesia. So please, um, any of them we can start or anybody is interested to start the question. Anybody to raise his hand? Shall we choose? Any volunteers? Dr. Ahmed, uh, he will give 30 seconds from now. Otherwise, he has to choose <laughs> one of, of the participants randomly. So as we said, it's not an exam. Uh, don't be shy. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's a matter you can consider as interaction. So we are interacting with Dr. Ahmed and with me. Then uh, it, it's not a matter that this is uh, wrong or this is correct. It's, it's a matter of interactive discussion rather than uh, you consider it as an, an exam. But at the end, it's preparing you to, to the exam and the topic. Anybody's in Dr. Asaf Tariq and Dr. Tariq, and there's three people now because they can talk, you know? Okay. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, in the morning round, uh, you are presenting uh, presented with the following data obtained from uh, a hypotensive patient, uh, mean arterial blood pressure uh, 60 and uh, mean right uh, atrial pressure uh, uh, six and the systemic uh, vascular resistant uh, 407 and the cardiac output uh, 4.5 liter. Uh, what is the most uh, accurate inter inter interpretation of uh, the data? Uh, A, septic shock, B, anaphylactic shock, uh, C, hemorrhagic uh, shock, uh, and uh, D, uh, the data uninterruptible. Uh, and the data uninterpretable. Uh, interpretable. Yani you cannot interpret. Yes. So, so. Uh, anaphylactic uh, shock. Anaphylactic shock. So you mean B? B, yes. So can you tell me, Dr. Tariq, why not A, why not C, why not D? Uh, because uh... The systemic vascular resistance is very low, uh, and I think this uh, with severe uh, vasodilation, uh, I think it happened more in anaphylactic shock, uh, more than uh, the other. In hemorrhagic shock, you... there is vasoconstriction. In septic shock, uh, there is vasodilation also, but it's not like, uh, uh, like an anaphylactic shock. Okay, if you, you group the septic shock and the anaphylactic shock under the distributive shock, so? Yes, yes. So both we will have uh, low systemic vascular resistance, so? Correct? Yes, yes. So any data in your hand or in your mind that 
can tell you septic shock will have SVR of, for example, 300 or 400, but anaphylactic shock will have 200 or 400. Do you have any evidence about this? No. So why you choose anaphylactic, but you did not choose septic, though both of them, they have low SVR under the distributive shock because of the wadi spread, as you mentioned, vasodilation. Yes. Uh... Well, you are right, Doctor. Uh, I, will, I think both the same. Yeah. They are to. We need one answer, but we need the we're single answer. Our question is the most single answer. Most single answer. So that the data is un, uh, inter, uh, interpretable. What do you mean? I yeah, think you, we you, can. You, you, uh, uh, we can. Uh, uh, we can give also chance to the to the next people who are raising their hands yes. okay. to to listen to more opinion also as well. So before moving to the second volunteer, so Dr. Ahmed, uh, sorry, Dr. Uh, Tariq, so the final the final thought, it's B or D or A or C. D D. Dr. Dr. Tariq. Okay. D. 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 Dr. Ahmed, you can move. Okay. Dr. Isam Sadiq, you can start. Yes, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I think the answer is uh, D. That that are Rahman? interpretable. Data is uh, un, are un, uninterpretable uh, because uh, we have here Rahman? high cardiac output. Dr. Saad? Ah, Dr. Uh, Dr. Isam, uh, yeah. Dr. Isam started, we can hear Dr. you. Dr. Saad? Yes, 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 I'm here. I'm here. Thank you. Dr. Yes. Saad? Yes, Dr. Saad, yes. Samainak, yes. Dr. Saad. Samain yes, Saad. We hear you. We, we hear can you, hear you. Dr. Saad, we hear you. Dr. Saad? Yes, yes, we hear you, Dr. Saad. We can hear you. Dr. Ahmed, I cannot hear you. Dr. Saad? Yes, yes, we, we can hear you. you. We yeah. can hear you. Dr. Hello? Yeah. We hear you. We hear you. Dr. Saad, I cannot hear you well. I hear you. I hear you very well. Yeah. Still, you hear me? Still, I cannot hear you. Do you hear me, Dr. Adel? Your signal is very weak, Dr. Adel. Signal week. Dr. Saad? Yes, yes, Dr. Adel, we hear you. Sorry, sorry for this technical issue. My apologies. Dr. Yes, we hear you. Dr. Saad? Yes, we just take him. Yeah, that's fine. So I did how he's gone. Sorry about that, guys. Hello? Hear me? Do you hear me? We can. Hello? We can hear Dr. you. Dr. We can hear you well. We can hear you well. Hello? Dr. Dr. Adil, we hear you now. I can hear you, Dr. Saad. Yeah. The square, one point seven. So it will become low also. So uh, that is interpretable because also between the anaphylactic shock and the history is important. Uh, patient receive any medication uh, can lead to the anaphylactic shock or uh, patient has fever. So it is not interpretable uh, what is the type of uh, septic or anaphylactic. Hmm. Okay. 
So, so the uh, examination now, is, uh, yeah. Okay. So uh, your answer is D, is the data is uh, uninterpretable. Uh, uh, from your point of view that uh, because in your opinion that the cardiac output, uh, you build your question uh, on the cardiac output, so, uh, that is 4.5. Yeah. Do you, ex do you yeah. expect higher than 4.5 in septic shock or anaphylactic shock? Cardiac output, not cardiac index. Uh, cardiac output can be uh, in the <coughs> in the septic shock can be uh, increased or uh, normal, but in effect the shock will be decreased. Okay. Yeah, almost. But what, what about 4.5 here liter per minute cardiac output? It's uh, normal, so, high, uh, or low? Uh, should be uh, normal. Uh, I think it is low. Yani, yani query, 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 borderline or, or low. Borderline or low, so it it applies for septic shock or anaphylactic shock. It's applied applied for septic shock. Sorry. So again, you are still with the D, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Afam, and thanks, Dr. Farid. Uh, let's to uh, move for uh, our uh, four corners uh, for each question as we present in, in usual the correct answer, the rationale, some, te some teaching points and the references. So the correct answer, uh, correct is uh, D, as uh, Dr. Afam mentioned, that the data uh, are uninterpretable. Uh, so it's not A, uh, septic shock, is not uh, B, anaphylactic shock, is not C, hemorrhagic shock, but it's D. But um, Dr. Assam, he was uh, playing around the correct answer, but he did not give me the 100% uh, correct rationale. Yes, his choice is correct, which is D, but his rationale uh, to some extent was not convincing me. Let's to convince Dr. Afan first, then Dr. Tariq, then the, the audience, why we choose D, though the systemic vascular resistance is low, is 407. Uh, if you remember from the basic physiologic equation that the systemic vascular resistance or the SVR. Dr. Ahmed, do you hear me, Dr. Saad? Ah, yes, Dr. Adel, we can hear you well. Okay. So, uh, thanks a lot. So, uh, the SVR, if you go back to the basic, the SVR or the systemic vascular resistance, I'm talking about the resistance, not the index. So, the SVR, it's an equation. Uh, the map or the mean arterial blood pressure minus the central venous pressure divided by the cardiac output, all are multiplied by uh, constant 80. So this is the SVR. Map minus CVB divided by cardiac output all are multiplied by 80. So here, this is uh, an illustration for uh, our example to get the uh, normal SVR. So for example, if you have the map for the mean arterial pressure, 86, for example, millimeter mercury, and uh, the CVP is 12, divided by the cardiac output, which is 4.3 in, in our example, not in our question, so uh, you will you will subtract this divided by the cardiac output, which is 4.3, then uh, multiply the the, the result uh, in, uh, by 80. Then in, in this example, the uh, the the SVR will be uh, close to 1,000 dyne per second per uh, centimeter to the square of five minus five. Uh, as you know from the basics that the SVR, the normal SVR between 700 
to 1500 lines per second per centimeter to pixel. So this is the normal SVR. So again, this is the equation, MAP minus CVV divided by cardiac output multiplied by eight. If you apply this equation, driving this from our uh, question that we have the MAP 60, we have the right atrial pressure, which is the CVB is six. So 60 minus six divided by cardiac output is 4.5. So here you will divide 54, the, the, the result of subtraction six from 60. So this is 54 divided by 4.5. The result will be multiplied by 80. Then it will give you the systemic vascular resistance. Then you will compare it to the uh, 407, which is displayed on the monitor from the invasive monitor. So let's do uh, check our monitor. So uh, uh, as, as, as a matter of fact, if you go for the basics, this SVR or the systemic vascular resistance uh, as a formula, as I told you, this is uh, MAP minus CVV divided by the current output multiplied by 80. It was uh, a simple equation derived uh, from uh, applying the Ohm's loop, uh, which uh, uh, links the, the, the circulatory system uh, as, or to consider the circulatory system as an electric circuit. So uh, derived from this is the, the, the based on the Ohm's law. So the resistance of the electrical circuit is the voltage difference. Here, the voltage difference is MAP minus CVB divided by the current, which is the cardiac output. So this is uh, what we call it the, uh, uh, or we translated uh, in the, our uh, human circulation is the, the pressure change map to CVB minus CVB divided by the total body flow, which is the uh, cardiac output. So if you go back for the basics, the, the, the blood pressure here is the uh, cardiac output mul multiplied by systemic vascular resistance. From the equation, you derive the systemic vascular resistance in the blood pressure divided by cardiac output. For the pressure difference, here will be map minus CVB divided by the cardiac output and you multiply the constant of 79.9 or 80. This is a constant to convert the millimeter uh, mercury, uh, which is the pressure divided by liter per minute, the cardiac output into the unit of the SVR times per second per uh, centimeter root of minus five. This is the, uh, uh, how can we uh, measure the SVR? This is, uh, uh, we drive, the constant uh, 80. So uh, let's to apply uh, uh, with some uh, teaching points. Here, uh, our systemic vascular resistance, uh, if you go back to apply it in our example. So in our example, the systemic vascular resistance is, uh, uh, as uh, I show you in the, uh, uh, question, here is uh, the uh, MAB 60, the CVB is six, and the cardiac output is uh, 4.5. So let's to apply here, 60 minus six, divided by the cardiac output 4.5, this to multiply by 80. So the result, the, the result will be 960 lines per second, but not 407. If you go back for here, he, he gave you it's 407 uh, in the monitor. So is it correct? No, because now I have the, the, all the items or all the components of my equation, 60 minus six divided by 4.5 multiplied by 80. The result will be 960, not 407. So my monitor or the patient monitor or the patient uh, hemodynamic monitor, whatever who uh, interpreted or who, who calculated systemic vascular resistance as 407 is wrong because when he gave me the MAP 60 and the CVB 6, 
and the current output was uh, 4.5. When I calculated manually, then it came as 960, not 407. So the, from, from the data, it's not matching with uh, septic shock, it's not matching with hemorrhagic shock, it's not matching with, uh, though it's still normal, yes, normal SVR, but I'm not talking about normal abnormal. I'm, I'm talking about the, 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 the calculation itself. It's wrong. It's, it's a wrong calculation from the monitor because based on the data that I have at MAP and TVB and cardiac output, it should be 960, not 407. And I should not build up or uh, take a decision based on this. So the correct answer, yes, is D, uninterpretable, because it's wrong. When I did the manual calculation, it came as 960 while on the monitor it's 407. So there is something wrong with the calculation of the monitor. At the end, it's a monitor, it's a computer, it's not 100% uh, correct. Uh, there is a room for fallacies, there is a room for false reading, there is a wrong for computations, then you have to recheck your monitor. So once this fact has been established, you should repeat the measurement and to redo the calculation of the SVR. And because the data are uh, not interpretable, it is not possible to determine whether uh, A or B or C, uh, as I, I mentioned, because at the end, it's low SVR, but does not match with the reading you give it to me in, in, in the monitor. So this is uh, how can we recheck the reading and you cannot take it for granted. And you have, before you take a decision, especially from those calculations, you have to go back to the uh, uh, basics or the basic physiology. So uh, uh, bottom line for our colleagues, for our residents, for our fellows, who are relying on uh, the advanced monitoring in the ICU, either uh, hemodynamic monitoring or ventilator graphs, or um, even the, uh, the ECG uh, automated report, do not rely on uh, the, the machine 100%. You have to think, you have to interpret the data more and more based on the number that you have and based on your clinical suspicion and your clinical judgment. So again, my advice is don't be fooled by the computed variable, whatever, the machine. At the end, remember, it's a machine. Uh, second, do not forget the basic variable equations and physiology. And our example is a very good example for this, which is the systemic vascular resistance. And I know most of us, uh, dealing with the uh, anesthesia, we, we, we have background, good background about the physics, and this is one of uh, uh, the basic physics, which is the Ohm's law, and here we drive the systemic vascular system. People who are dealing with cardiac surgery, uh, ICU or cardiac surgery OR, they are dealing with invasive monitoring, uh, general ICU, the uh, uh, septic shock and anaphylaxis, if we are having continuous invasive monitoring, so we are relying on the hemodynamic variables. So you have to recheck those variables, systemic vascular resistance, cardiac output, cardiac indices, which pressure. So again, it's, it's a calculation. So you have to be uh, sure before uh, building a decision or proceeding for a decision. And once more, do not rely on a single read, please, of uh, uh, your monitor or patient monitor, especially if it is a hemodynamic uh, um, uh, set, think, and uh, if you are in doubt, calculate, uh, especially if you have equation in, in your hand or in your pocket, uh, so you can recheck your monitor. Yes, the monitor is, is wrong. The reading is not matching with what, what the, the variables that I have. Uh, and if it doesn't make sense with you, simply repeat the measurement, one, twice, thrice, take the average, recheck the monitor, recalibrate, because it will build uh, a decision based on this variable, sometimes is not needed. Uh, so I, I think it, it, it's clear uh, for, from my uh, few slides here regarding the systemic vascular resistance, uh, how can we uh, calculate, 
how can we recheck our invisible monitor? Because most of our monitors now are automated based on the variable. So uh, do not take it for granted, just recheck. And you can practice this side, go for any monitor that you have in your unit and just recheck, for example, the systemic vascular resistance and you can test the monitor's readings as correct or, or not. Because at the end, he has to compute or to calculate the variables uh, based on the map, for example, uh, the CVV and the cardiac output. Uh, as a reference, I encourage everybody um, he, in, in, in the critical care residency or fellowship, and he wants to have some basics about the, the physiology and critical care. This is a very rich website. Uh, I encourage everybody to go through, um, well organized. Uh, as we, 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 we label it from head to two, it's called Deranged Physiology. Uh, it's a free online uh, resource of intensive care um, uh, addressing the, the background of physiology, hemodynamics uh, on, on different act, uh, aspects of the critically ill uh, patient. Deranged Physiology website. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. Uh, thank you, Dr. Asam. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed. Uh, thank you, Dr. Uh, oh.